everyone, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm doing something just a little bit different. I'm going to bring you an out of the box review of Ellen Villa Disco in the color Chocolate Rooted. This wig was sent to me, and here she is, by Wig Studio One. So I could show this one to you. Kaz did a review of Disco. She did such a great job, and I thought it would be really cool to show this super wild curly style on someone built just a little bit differently than Taz. So if you'd like to see this on me, then stick around. Okay guys, I usually do my out of the box separate, tack it on the end, and then film the review. But today I thought it'd be kind of fun to do this review a little bit in a little bit of a different order. And I'm gonna start off with the out of the box and then we'll see where it goes from there. Before I put Disco on and show you what she looks like, I'd like to thank Wig Studio One for partnering with me on this review. It's such a pleasure to continue to be a guest reviewer for them and do periodic reviews. It's another way to show not just a trustworthy retailer, which they absolutely are, but also to have lots of different styles show up on lots of different people. So if you're so inclined and you appreciate when retailers work with us reviewers, because let's face it, we wouldn't have nearly the variety that we have if we didn't have that kind of support, then please shoot them an email at support at Wig Studio One and let them know that you appreciate them and their reviewers. Okay guys, uh, also I want to mention their Facebook group. Most of you know all this, you've watched many of my reviews, but just in case you're new, Wig Studio One does have an online Facebook group called Wig Studio One Wig and Topper Support Group. Um, I don't even know what they're at at this point, like 15,000 members or something like that. And it's just such a great place to get support with wigs. You will get so much response from the ladies in that group. If you have questions about wigs, inevitably a whole bunch of the women in that group own that wig, can show pictures of it, can tell you their impressions. So it's really great, a great enhancement to your journey here where you can get a lot more help. All right, let's look at Disco. You ready? I'm going to put her on. You know I love my curly wigs, and I just have been eyeing this wig a little nervous because of how wild she is. And when Wig Studio One agreed, oh yes, agreed to send this one to me, I was so excited. This is out of the box. I have done zero to her. I have not even hung this one upside down. This is literally out of the box. Let's look at Disco from all sides. Oh wow, <laughs> it's so fun. This curl is just something else. You know, um, one of the things I thought would be fun, and I didn't plan anything with this review. I thought, I'm just going to fly by the seat of my pants and see where this review brings me as I'm doing it. And as I'm looking in the mirror and I'm looking at this curl, I'm thinking, this is going to be a really great wig to show some how you can take like super curly styles like this and play around with accessories. Um products that I might want to use to help tame these curls a little bit. I am blown away by how these fibers feel. Wow. These feel so incredibly natural and realistic. Now, I've seen a couple of reviews of this piece, and, and Taz did hers, and I've seen a couple of others, and all of them talked about how incredible these fibers feel, and they truly do. It's like the softest human hair ever. It's so light and fine. It is so fine and it's so soft. I I mean I felt a lot of wigs and lots of wigs feel great out of the box and the fibers feel amazing. There's something different about these though. Something incredibly different about these. They are so soft. I, I would swear that they were human hair. If and, and I would I, I would normally, I think, be able to tell if somebody tried to trick me and said, okay, is this human hair? You know, if I had a bunch of wigs in front of me, I really think I would swear that this is human hair and would be shocked to find out that it's not. Wow, this feels so good. Okay, you guys, so out of the box, let me get close so you can see this curl pattern. I don't really see much in the way of box hair on this one. 
she hasn't like been super flattened and compacted so I don't think this needs a whole lot of intervention actually um, there really isn't much in the way of permatease on this one I'm not feeling any poofy pillowy permatease I can feel straight down to cap it is such a good density and now I know it's a huge head of hair it's very wild it's very big and poofy but it's like it's the way that these curls are this does not feel like a ton of hair it is not heavy on my head at all this cap is running a little small I can feel it it's kind of average petite feeling I mean it's let me look at the adjusters on this see if they're in at all because it's feeling really snug on my circumference not really maybe a tiny tiny bit let me put it back on that helped a little um, I would say it seems a little smaller than my girl monos feel on me if that I know a lot of you guys have girl mono because of my love for girl mono so that could help you it has this teeny tiny little lace front let's look at the lace front and then I will put it back on and show it to you look at that teeny 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 little lace front um, I guess it's better than nothing it definitely will help because that's where the shortest hair is that's where they sort of kind of separated out there so I guess that helps to give it a little bit more realism it gives you a place to kind of pin up some hair if you want to but kind of a little bit unnecessary otherwise this is really just a basic cap wig now I know for a fact I have some wig sisters out there who had curly hair like this I know a few people whose hair is like this and so if you have lost your hair for whatever reason and your hair was super curly I am so thrilled that they made a wig like this and whenever I see these super super curly wigs that I think people who've never had curly hair before wonder who would ever wear that um, unless you know people in your life that have that kind of curly hair I do think that it's hard to understand but this kind of curl I know that there are some people thinking wow that looks just like my bio hair there is uh, just something fun about this it definitely they named it perfectly disco uh, it really reminds me of the hair in the 70s during that kind of disco era I was just a babe then I was born in 71 but I've seen pictures and you know that was still somewhat around in the early 80s and so that really um, is an apt name for this one now I am thinking there are some really fun styles that we're going to be able to do with this. Taking some clips and clipping up some pieces like this. I need to, you know, pull some down. But that's going to give it a whole other kind of profile. So I'm excited to play around with some styling. So I'm going to, um, I will do that at the end of this video. I'll go and just go into my bathroom and we'll just do, so, do a little bit of fun styling with clips so that you can see some of the potential. Let's take a look at this color, Chocolate Rooted. I have Girl Mono and Chocolate Rooted. That was the first Girl Mono that I had and I wore it a ton and I really loved this color. It is such a good kind of neutral to warm brown that's not too dark it's not too light it's not too overly highlighted let me um pull it up to the um, camera here and get out of it so that you can see it so this one actually doesn't really have any visible highlighting my girl mono sort of did a little bit um it's got a super subtle root let me see, do they have the color codes on this tag? I know they often include them. So this is a 6.830. My Girl Mono and Chocolate Rooted, I think was a 6.30.4. So you had a four root, and I'm guessing they did the same here. They have since stopped putting that root color on their tags, I've noticed, which I don't appreciate. Um, but it is a little bit of a darker root than the rest of it. So I think there's a very small four root that gives a bit of a shadow. The 6 is a medium dark brown, and then the 830 is, is a blend of like a chestnut brown and a medium auburn. This 
does not pull heavy red though. It's definitely, it's sort of a, it's really pretty. It's so well blended. It just really looks like a medium brown to the naked eye. The, I mean, there's a slight hint of some auburn in here, but it's not like a red. It's more like a chestnut brown in my opinion. So I have some wig sisters that always worry that if they get a brunette, it's gonna be too red. The one I have in my hand is not very red at all. I mean, honestly, if I'm struggling to even see that there's red in it, even though that 830 tells me that there is. So unless, like, if you need the ashiest of ashy browns, I actually really think this looks very, very neutral and very, very just kind of basic medium brown. And I'm not using the word basic in any kind of derogatory way. It's just really natural looking. So I'll show this color to you guys outside here in just a sec. I'll timestamp all of that. And then let's get in my bathroom and do some fun styling with this one. All right, everyone, I am braving negative four degrees <laughs> to do this video. Actually, it's not too bad out here if, when the wind isn't blowing. Um, for those of you who live in warm states, you probably can't believe that it can be comfortable to be outside in this cold of weather but when there's no wind and the sun is out it actually isn't bad at all so I'm not complaining all right so I can't really see my phone very well because we have got bright sunlight with not a cloud in the sky and so I can't really tell but my guess is that you're seeing just a tiny, the tiniest bit of potential auburn in this. But if you're going to see red, this is where you're going to see it. So I'm going to have to watch this playback and see. But inside, I'm not really seeing a lot of the red. It's really a great kind of chestnut brown, running fairly neutral. And then, you know, that slight, slight root, pretty negligible though. Yeah, the where it's cold in this kind of temperature is your fingers. So there you go. If you're wondering if it pulls a lot of red, I don't think this one does. But my girl mono in the same color, which had different color codes, um, did pull a little more red. So um, just watch for those color codes on Ellen Villa wigs. And other manufacturers too. This isn't just exclusive to them. You know, sometimes the name may be the same, but the color codes are a little different. I don't know why they do that, but you just got to pay attention. All right, guys, hope that helped. All right, guys, let's do some styling. Okay, so first of all, I get asked all the time about how I keep my curly wigs in good condition, how I keep the curls looking good, <clears throat> excuse me, wear after wear. And so I want to show you two different products that I love with curly wigs. One is a wig specific product and one is not. So this one is Simply Style and Silk Spray. I've shown it in other videos. I know Taz has talked about it. This stuff has a scent. I believe they do have an unscented, but it's pure silicone. And so what I like to do with it is I like to spray it on my hands just a little bit goes a long way and then I just kind of rub my hands together and then I just work it through on the curls and what it does is it just coats those fibers and it helps and then I scrunch it back up but and it helps to eliminate frizzies and just kind of keeps those fibers nice you can also spray it directly on it does come out in a light mist it sort of depends on what I'm trying to do the other product is Aussie Mir Miracle Curls Curl Defining Oil. I got this, I believe I got this at Target, but you can get it at Walmart, at drugstores. Amazon does not carry this with a good price. Sometimes you can't get it on there, but I've not ever seen this for a good price. I paid less than $5 for this, but I think you can get it anywhere from $5 to $8. And it's just this, it's a pump, and it's just this thick, kind of, it says it's an oil. It has, I don't know, a bunch of big names in it. Jojoba seed oil is one of the oils though, and coconut oil. It also has a smell. Both of these are fragranced, light. I love the fragrance of this so much. I just actually wish I could get a perfume in it. It's not perfumey though. It's just this 
oh, I don't know how to describe it. It's a sweet smell. It's very, very nice. But again, I just put some on my fingers and then I just run my fingers through the curls and that coats them. It helps to refresh them. It helps to eliminate frizzies. It works so great. So either one of those products works. I don't really have a, I mean, I don't know if I can recommend one over the other. It just really sort of depends on what I'm trying to do. I really like them both though. All right, sorry, I had to pause the video. I heard a knocking. I thought someone was at my bathroom door, but it must be my daughter whose wall of their bathroom shares a wall with our bathroom and she must've been doing something in there. I don't know if you heard that a little bit in the last segment, but okay. So just to get that part out of the way, I love those products, either one. I guess if I had to choose, if I could only have one, Oh gosh, it's so hard because I think the Simply Stylin can work good for a lot of different things. Whereas the Miracle Curls, I really only use it on my most curly wigs um, and I really wouldn't want to be without it for that. So I'd say for a super curly wig, it's probably the Miracle Miracle Curl stuff, but for a more broad application, the Simply Stylin. All right, so what can we do with styling with this one? So. I have not even played with styling, so everything I'm going to do right now is just me testing some things, but what I find works really well with curly wigs, headbands are always a good choice, bandanas can be really good, especially with a wig like this. So you just have to sort of figure out, since this does not have a lace front or any monofilament, it's just going to take a little bit to figure out how... Like, how do you manipulate the fibers so it doesn't look kind of fake and cheesy and doesn't look wiggy? So you're going to, you know, pull some fibers out on the sides like this as you get it situated. And then I would tend to sort of amp up the back and make it a little bit messier. Um, another option, if you're feeling particularly overwhelmed, is to take and pull the back up into like a ponytail. Let's see. Hold on, I'm going to grab, I don't want to keep you guys watching Blake's face. I'm going to grab a ponytail holder. Let me just pause this for a sec. Okay, I actually found one that almost matches, but lots of different kinds of ponytail holders will work. I'll turn around for you guys in a sec. But you can pull it up into a ponytail in the back. And then, you know, keep some hair down because you want to hide the cap. I'm looking in my mirror behind the camera. But there you go, something like that. If you're really overwhelmed with the curl and then, you know, just play with it until you like the way it looks, but you know, for people who've had curly hair in the past, this is a legitimate hairstyle. Um, another option, and such a great, like, casual, running around style. Another option would be to grab some clips and just start pulling it up in various places and sticking some claw clips in. And again, sort of the messier, the better, I think. I'm not grabbing clips that match right now. I'm just grabbing whatever, whatever I can, but. So there, that changes that look. It's a little bit more poofy on the top, but a little bit tamed down on the sides. And then, like I said, a regular bandana that you tie around your head and then clip the hair up in various places. You can either use a claw clip or you can use bobby pins. And so as you get the hair sort of where you want it, and then you just start taking hair and you just start bobby pinning it down in some places. And that will also help to tame it. So I think 
Personally, if you like curly hair and you want to be able to do some really fun, messy kind of styles, clipped up, updo, things like that, actually, the wilder the curl, the more flexible it's going to be in you being able to do those things. So you may look at this piece right now and think, oh gosh, no, there's just never any way I can ever do that. But as you started to see me doing some of the styling, it starts to go, oh, but, but I think I could do that. And I kind of like that. And that's what I love about super curly wigs is the styling potential. The wigs like this that are so over the top wild and curly, I don't usually wear them as they come. I usually style them. And that's when they, I find their true value and they become gems in my wig closet. Um, kind of a, a last observation. I really actually dislike this little lace there. I kind of wish they didn't put it there. I think it makes the cap lay funny right here and it doesn't really serve any benefit. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that whole thing. I don't know if cutting it will help because it doesn't really want to lay that flat. I don't think it's noticeable to people because I think the way the hair falls all around it, it, it kind of hides it. But that's just my observation. And then something I didn't mention, I said it didn't really have a lot of permatees. It really doesn't have the poofy, pillowy permatees. It does have some crimpy fibers, though, on the top. You need them in a basic cap wig like this. And I didn't even show the cap. I did show the cap. I showed the lace front. The rest of the cap is just basic cap. It does have an extended nape and Velcro adjusters. Um, the the permatees it does have is very light, crimpy fibers that help you know, lift the hair and disguise the cap, not visible. So you really can't see it. There's just way too much curl and volume for you to be able to see it. So that's it, guys. I hope that helped you. My overall impressions, I really like it. It is very snug, though. Um, actually, I get I have a little extra cap up here, but it's very snug around my head, and I don't get great coverage over the top of my head. These ear tabs lay very high up on me. You can see a little bit of my bio hair. I don't have great coverage here. So if you are, um, look at my measurements. If you're really any bigger than I am, I'm, I'm thinking this probably isn't the right fit for you. It is pretty snug on me and I don't get great coverage. Um, so if you're average petite though, if the rest of you is petite, <laughs> this hair may really overwhelm you, but if your measurements are average petite, you might actually be able to wear this cap very comfortably and find it fits you very well. I'd say average large, it's going to be a stretch and, and large can't even really go there with this one. So anyway, that has been Disco. I'm super glad that I got this one. I 100% am going to wear this one on, on occasion with some of the styling techniques I just showed you for sure. It's really, really super cute. And those fibers, again, so awesome. So, if, you know, I can bring you guys an update at some point. I probably won't wear her a ton. And so I don't know how long it'll take me to be able to tell how well these curls hold up. But I have a feeling that if you use a product like this um, regularly, even after every wear, even though I'm not a fan of putting products, a lot of product on wigs, something like this, I might put in a little bit of that stuff after every wear just to coat these fibers and calm them down. I think it's probably going to last quite a while. So thanks for watching, you guys. And thank you to Wig Studio One for helping me bring you guys this review by sending me this wig. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.